that this hour, but we start tonight with this amazing kid. He is six foot two. He weighs 185 pounds. He's 17 years old. He runs the 40 yard dash in 4.51 seconds, which is amazing. That means uh, on that metric alone, he would have placed in the top dozen wide receivers going out for the NFL draft this year. And this kid is in high school. He goes to high school in Shreveport, Louisiana. He's a wide receiver and he's one of the most heavily recruited football wide receivers in the country. And in November, this young man, his name is Jonathan Jones, this remarkable young athlete, he got an offer from the biggest and most important cultural institution in the state of Louisiana that is not named either Mardi Gras or Jazz. Jonathan Jones got an offer from a big time Louisiana college football program. And when Louisiana Tech gave him that scholarship offer in November, and Jonathan Jones accepted and committed that he would go play football for Louisiana Tech, it made headlines all across the state. It was a huge deal, obviously, for this very promising young man, this young football player. It was a huge deal for Louisiana Tech. It was a huge deal for just Louisiana. There were interviews all over the press about how this three-star wide receiver was coming to Louisiana Tech, and it was such a coup for that school's football program. It was just great news in November. And then a couple months later, actually just a few weeks ago, that same young man, Jonathan Jones, uncommitted. He decommitted from Louisiana Tech. And he put out a statement that sent a little shiver down the spine in Louisiana, even down the spine of people who are not college football fans, and I hear there are a couple. Uh, and explaining why he was decommitting to Louisiana Tech, this young man said, quote, I'm grateful for the blessing and the opportunity to receive an offer from Louisiana Tech University. In light of recent political events, though, I must, with a heavy heart, rescind my verbal commitment to the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And when that young man cited recent political events in taking back his stated commitment that he would go play at Louisiana Tech, what he meant by recent political events was this guy, Bobby Jindal. Bobby Jindal was the governor of Louisiana for the past eight years. When he came in, as governor, in the first place, the state had big budget surpluses. By the end of his first year in office, though, that was over. And thanks to Bobby Jindal's economic genius and his big ideas about how to run that state, not only did Bobby Jindal squander the state's budget surplus, which they had when he got there, but every year thereafter, while he was governor, the state went deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into a financial hole. Bobby, Jindal, Bobby Jindal's policies were such a financial catastrophe for the state of Louisiana the longer he was in office, the worse it got. By the time Bobby Jindal was running for president last year, promising to do to the United States what he did to his home state, um, last year, by last year, one of the big ideas the Bobby Jindal administration came up with to try to scrounge up some money somewhere to run the state government was to start selling off the cars used by the state government. Literally selling off state-owned vehicles at auction because obviously it's a wasteful thing to have cars in the state government. If state workers need to get somewhere to do something for their job, obviously they can hitch or jog, or they could save up and buy a skateboard. Maybe they could pool their resources and each office could have its own skateboards. Then when people needed to go to Baton Rouge or something and they were in New Orleans, they could just grab the hold, maybe the bumper of a truck on the highway and they could get there that way. Maybe two skateboards in case you both needed to be at the meeting. The Bobby Jindal administration thought they could maybe get a million dollars or so at auction for state vehicles, and so they decided to start selling them off. Sure, try that. That was the kind of stuff they had to turn to under Bobby Jindal. At one point, the state of Louisiana uh, won a settlement in a lawsuit. That's obviously a one-time thing. That's not the sort of thing that you can count on year after year, but they decided that they would use that settlement to run the state government for a while. Uh, then they found some other state property that they could maybe sell off to get a little cash that way. Sure, try that. I mean, shockingly, the pawn shop approach to state assets doesn't turn out to be an awesome long-term path to fiscal stability. And so by the time Bobby Jindal finally left office at the end of his two terms, he had gotten himself a spectacularly failed presidential campaign out of it, but he had also put his state into the worst financial crisis the state of Louisiana has ever faced in its history. You want to know how bad it was? It was this bad. That means you can say farewell to college football next fall. That is the new governor of Louisiana, a Democrat named John Bell Edwards, who took over from Bobby Jindal in January. Uh, after just a few weeks in office, 
This new governor was apparently so shocked and horrified by what he found when he got into office, so shocked and horrified by the scale of the disaster that Bobby Jindal had left in his wake, that the new governor gave this remarkable and I think unprecedented televised primetime crisis address to the people of the state of Louisiana, basically to sound the alarm, to alert the state that what Bobby Jindal had done in his time in office was worse than anything the state had ever been through before in terms of its finances. The disaster Bobby Jindal left behind was so big, the state is now considering closing hospitals, closing colleges, even, yes, ending college football. Those were the, quote, recent political events that led that promising young wide receiver from Shreveport, Jonathan Jones, to uncommit from Louisiana Tech after he had previously decided to go there. I mean, this, this young football player, he doesn't appear to be any sort of political activist. He doesn't seem to have any evident political interests, at least looking from the outside. He's just a really good football player. And if you had other options and you were a really good, promising young football player, would you commit to go play football at a college that might get shut down? This summer? Tonight I speak to you as no other Louisiana governor has ever spoken to our state because the challenges have never been so great nor the impact so severe for all of us who live, work, or go to school here. Since I took office exactly one month ago today, I have met with business and industry, working families, educators, and parents to share the news of our budget crisis, to seek their ideas, and to share my own so that we can get down to the business of solving this massive problem as quickly as possible. The largest budget deficit in our state's history. This is a historic fiscal crisis, the likes of which our state has never seen and absolute candor is required. Our health care system is on the verge of imploding. The health care services that are in jeopardy literally mean the difference between life and death. Funding for vital services like hospice care and end-stage kidney dialysis would be impacted. Higher education will face catastrophic cuts over the next four months. And that comes on the heels of the largest disinvestment in higher education in the nation over the last eight years. If you are a student attending one of these universities, it means that you will receive a grade of incomplete. Many students will not be able to graduate, and student athletes across the state at those schools will be ineligible to play next semester. That means you can say farewell to college football next fall. Please join me in praying for our state, and I'm asking that you to please pray for me and for all of our elected officials. Usually elected officials finish a speech by asking, you know, God bless our state, or God bless the country. And, and John Bell Edwards did that too at the very end of his remarks, but you know it's serious when what the governor is asking for is for people at large to start praying for the state and to start praying for him as the governor of the state. That is the gravity of the situation when you are in such a financial catastrophe that you're literally talking about unplugging people from dialysis machines and ending hospice care. So people currently in the process of dying no longer get supportive care and pain relief that you get in hospice. I mean, when you're talking about shutting down the university system and that second tier deity in the state of Louisiana known as college football, that's serious stuff. And that is Louisiana right now. And the presidential campaign heads to Louisiana in two days. And, and that means, you know, to a certain extent that the national media is thundering into Louisiana now, focused on the number of delegates at stake and the ad spending in the state and the demographics of the electorate and likely turnout predicting who might win and by what margin. Uh, and that's great and that's all good. No problem with that. But let the record show as well. Let it be a notice to the national press thundering down to Baton Rouge to cover this election this weekend that until quite recently, the Louisiana Secretary of State's office was warning that the state would probably not have enough money to hold this primary. They didn't have enough money to hold this election on Saturday until very recently. Ultimately, I guess they did find that many. Pres presumably Bobby Jindal pawned a few state police cars or something. But they are in a full-blown crisis in that state because of him and his policies. There's a special session that's been underway this week in the Louisiana legislature trying to figure out how to keep hospitals open, how to keep schools open. The president of LSU setting off an alarm in sports media across the country saying that the best case plan he had seen for state education would literally render half the LSU football team ineligible to play next year because they will have incomplete on their report cards. There will be no summer school options for football players to maintain their athletic eligibility. He says that is the best case scenario that has been put forward for Louisiana schools. 
That's what Bobby Jindal left behind in his state. When Bobby Jindal quit the presidential race this year and endorsed Marco Rubio for president, Marco Rubio called Bobby Jindal, quote, one of the best governors in America. Really? Marco Rubio, incidentally, big football fan. On the same day as the Louisiana primary this weekend, voters are also going to be turning out to vote at the presidential nominating caucuses in the great state of Kansas. Uh, like Bobby Jindal, Kansas Governor Sam Brownback also came into office uh, with good budget surplus. He then announced that he was going to conduct a great experiment in Kansas. That was his term. He called it a, quote, live experiment in conservative economics in the state of Kansas. Thanks to Sam Brownback and his experimental conservatism, what he's done to that state, his state has now gone from budget surpluses when he took over to the worst financial crisis they have ever had in Kansas state history. Kansas has had its credit rating downgraded multiple times since he's been governor. Kansas school districts last year ended up having to cut short the school year. In some school districts in Kansas last year, they sent kids home 12 days before the school year was supposed to end. Not because the kids learned fast, but because the school districts just ran out of money to keep the doors open. So they called the school year over before it was actually done. Kansas has never had a financial disaster like the one they're in right now because of the policies of Sam Brownback. Sam Brownback has also endorsed Marco Rubio as his choice for president. So, it's just interesting. Louisiana and Kansas are two of the states that are going to be voting for presidential nominees this weekend. Uh, and, and then, of course, there's the next big one, right? The biggest delegate prize after Super Tuesday, which will be the great state of Michigan. Michigan, which is lucky enough to be governed by a man named Rick Snyder. It's kind of amazing, right, that you've got this disaster, unprecedented disaster in Louisiana because of the governor there. You've got this unprecedented disaster in Kansas because of the governor there. And then right after those states, they're going to disaster zone Michigan, where the biggest political question in the state of Michigan ahead of that state's presidential primary on Tuesday is whether Governor Rick Snyder is going to last that long or whether he will have had to resign before that primary happens on Tuesday in his state. Because obviously of the, the, the flint lead poisoning disaster that was caused by the Snyder administration. As more and more documents have come out showing awareness of the Flint disaster and involvement in the Flint disaster by basically all of Governor Snyder's top aides for months and months and months while he professed total ignorance of the crisis, calls have grown steadily across the state and across an ideological spectrum of the state that Rick Snyder has to go, that he has to resign, that he cannot effectively lead that state for another three years. So Rick Snyder has not resigned yet. But in these last few days leading up to the presidential primary, the, the calls for his resignation are starting to get deafening. And who knows what effect that's going to have on the primary. So we're in this very interesting moment, right? There's this collision of this fascinating presidential race on both the Democratic side and the Republican side. Because of these catastrophic failures by Bobby Jindal and Sam Brownback and Rick Snyder, these states that are all about to vote in the presidential race, they really are all in crisis. They're not normal states with normal politics anymore. They're all going through something unprecedented and unprecedentedly bad. And so, you know, the political campaigns, the presidential campaigns and the national political press will be thundering through these places over the next few days. But I think there's good reason to expect that things might ring a little different there than they do in the rest of the country. That, that the poll tested national messages of the various candidates might not resonate exactly the same in those states in crisis as they do in other states that aren't on political life support. I mean, it's one thing to rail against government in the abstract, right? To wish government away and deride government as stupid. It's another thing to actually be living right now in a place where terrible governance is shortening the school year, sending your kids home in May instead of June, and it's shutting down college football, and it's poisoning your kids. Badly run government is really bad for real people.